What's up, Meta Nerds? Today we're going to be doing a full breakdown and history of the Warthog, or its technical name, the M12 Force Application Vehicle. So we'll be diving into its specs, usage, and history as one of the most important UNSC vehicles, as well as ending on some behind the scenes facts. The Warthog is a family of all terrain vehicles designed for a variety of functions. They all share the same core structure, as well as the excellent speed and mobility, but the differences in armor and weaponry means that there's a hog for every situation. It was originally introduced in 2319 by AMG Transport Dynamics, under the name Z12, before being fully introduced to the galaxy as the M12. This means that the design of the Warthog is over 200 years old by the beginning of the Human Covenant War. And while the Warthog has seen many different iterations and updates, that's still an impressive service life, especially considering that it still remains the most common ground vehicle in the UNSC. The Warthog is so prevalent in fact that every UNSC service member, regardless of branch or specialty, is required to be trained on how to operate and maintain it. Following the Human Covenant War, however, the Warthog finally saw some of its first canonically confirmed updates, slightly altering the frame and adding some new features, including a redesigned transmission, drive shaft, and swing axle system, along with a nano-prismatic paint job, which could be programmed to refract light in different colors, being an active camouflage to blend into any environment. This version would be dubbed the M12B and enter service in late 2552. So let's look at some of its stats. The standard Warthog has a length of 6 meters or 20 feet, a width of 3 meters or 9.8 feet, and a height of 3.2 meters or 10 feet. Though of course that height changes depending on the weapon system attached to the vehicle. This gives the Warthog an imposing presence on the battlefield, especially considering how mobile it is for such a large vehicle, having a top speed of 78 miles per hour or 125 kilometers per hour. It's a bulky vehicle from every angle, with its length making it more than twice the size of a UNSC Mongoose, and a grunt longer than a current Humvee, while its width made it about 5 Forerunner monitors across, and its height is a full 3 feet taller than Master Chief in his Mjolnir armor, or two grunts stacked on top of each other. It weighed 3.25 tons, making it about half a ton heavier than a Humvee, or about equal to 6 Spartan twos. And while we never get a confirmed carrying capacity, it can carry at least three Spartans in full armor, two in the front plus the one on the mounted weapon, making its maximum carry weight at least 1.5 tons, which is the same payload as a Ford F-250. That speed and large size allowed the Warthog to break through human insurgencies, and even the battle-hardened Covenant. And when this thing was barreling down on you with those two tow cable hooks jutting out from under it, it was quite intimidating. And by the way, these two hooks look similar to the tusks of a Warthog, and that's where the vehicle gets its name. The most common variant of Warthog, the M12 Light Reconnaissance Vehicle, was equipped with either an M41 or M46 Vulcan Light Anti-Aircraft Gun. The M12B models coming with an M343A2 chain gun. This was the most fielded variant of the Warthog, but many more were produced, capitalizing on the platform's ability to be adapted for any function. The most basic version was the Scout Warthog, removing any mounted weapons in favor of a higher carrying capacity. Other notable variants include the M12R Light Anti-Aircraft Vehicle, equipped with M79 or M80 multiple rocket launchers, and is also known as the Rocket Hog or Missile Hog. The M12G1 Light Anti-Armor Vehicle, equipped with an M68 or M555 Goss Cannon, affectionately called the Goss Hog and the M831 Troop Transport, refitting the back of the vehicle to add seating for four additional passengers. Each of these models could also come with different camouflage, and other small tweaks including increased armor and environmental protection to suit different battlefields, including the Tundra, Arctic, Woodland, and Tropical variants. While these different versions all shared a very similar base design, there were several which took the modifications even further, like the M862 Arctic Warthog, which had a closed cabin and replaced its tires with four treads, which provided better traction in icy conditions. The Office of Naval Intelligence, or ONI, was also known to field their own Warthog, colored black with greatly improved armor and equipped with either an upgraded chain gun, Gauss gun, or rocket launcher. The UNSC Spirit of Fire and its crew would also field more unique versions, developed in their 20-year isolation from the rest of the galaxy, including a Trooper Warthog, an up-armored M12G1 Gauss Hog, which included Dazzle Camouflage, the Armored Warthog, a version of the M12 Light Reconnaissance Vehicle with heavier plating, most notably around that turret, a Flame Warthog, which is a variant with a mounted flamethrower and incendiary grenades, and a version personally customized for Sergeant John Forge, often called the Forge Hog, with heavy armor, energy shielding, and a field of nanobots for self-repairing. Following the peace between humanity and the Sangheili-led portion of the Covenant, now under the banner of Thalvatum and the Swords of Sanghelios, would develop two of their own experimental versions of this Warthog. 
the Vespin Warthog, essentially a Rocket Warthog with increased armor, and the Sword Warthog, an advanced variant with increased armor and a Covenant energy shield, along with an M343A2 chain gun, modified to fire the Subanese Crystal Ammunition, turning it into a sort of giant Covenant Needler. And much like Humvee to Hummer, there are several civilian models produced, such as the simply named Hog, with luxury features like voice control and sound dampeners to nullify road and engine noise. The 550 Skandaria Starspeed M12R, or Rally Hog, had ceramic armor instead of the standard titanium, and included turbines for increased speed. In the M12S Civilian Sport Transport, which cut down both the size and weight by 25 and 30% respectively, gave it a notable speed boost from 78 miles per hour to 119 miles per hour. Each of these civilian versions, of course, lacked the weapons. However, the 550 Rally Hog would be incorporated into the UNSC Infinity's War Games, which were training simulations using it in the light reconnaissance configuration with a mounted chain gun. Despite these many different forms, the core of the Warthog would remain the same with a four-wheel drive powered by a 12-liter liquid-cooled hydrogen internal combustion engine. These engines use hydrogen as a fuel source after humanity developed the technology to move past traditional fossil fuels, and almost all ground vehicles incorporate hydrogen engines. The Warthog also featured a Grog Hauptmann solar saline actuator to convert both fresh and salt water into hydrogen fuel. So when we see those fuel cans on the back of Warthogs, they're actually carrying water. With a 12-liter tank, it could travel up to 490 miles, or 790 kilometers. But really amazing engineering is that it could passively collect condensation from the atmosphere, meaning that just by waiting overnight, you could collect on average 125 miles of fuel just from that condensation. All of these features meant that it was nearly impossible for a warthog to run out of fuel. The warthog was one of the most valuable assets to the UNSC its speed nearly matching the Covenant's ghost, but with the added benefit of durable titanium armor that could shrug off a significant amount of small arms fire. And with the right weapon mounted up top, even the more common chain gun models, it was able to decimate the ghost within just a few seconds. But the Warthog did come with some significant disadvantages, the most obvious of which is its open top seating, meaning that it was easy for sufficiently skilled marksmen to take out the driver and or gunner. So don't expect to race through any jackal neighborhoods. The Warthog was also difficult to operate for inexperienced drivers, with all that weight and speed making it prone to tipping over, especially in poor weather conditions where the tires could lose traction. But despite all that, the Warthog was used to tremendous effect during the Human Covenant War, being able to take out the lighter Covenant vehicles and infantry with ease, especially in its Goss and Rocket variants. It is also essential to the survival of Spartan John 117, on more than one occasion being used to escape the detonation of the Pillar of Autumn on Installation 04, as well as the partial destruction of the Ark, allowing Master Chief, Cortana, and the Arbiter to reach the hangar of Forward Onto Dawn before the Battle of Installation 00. So that's it for its history and breakdown, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind-the-scenes stuff. The Warthog is primarily inspired by the real-life Humvee used by the US military, with its all-terrain capability and the mount-turreted weapon system. The Humvee even has a treaded variant for deep snow, which likely influenced the M862 Arctic Warthog. The US Air Force also has another vehicle used for combat search and rescue, which is actually nicknamed the Warthog, though its functionality differs greatly from the one in Halo. The Warthog itself has seen several cameos in other games, such as Forza, which even included its own version of the iconic Warthog run, and Rocket League, which created its own variant, the Needlehog, which featured Subanese crystal afterburners. This design was actually semi-canonized as a rejected, experimental variant under the name Project Hog Sticker. In Halo 3, ODST, and Reach, the model of the Warthog has Puma written on the tires, a reference to the popular parody series Red vs. Blue. Also, there's a funny mistake on the official stats on Halo Waypoint, where the width is inaccurately stated as 20.5 feet, which is the same as its length. Another quirk with the vehicle is that in the games, you can actually begin driving the Warthog as soon as you start to board it, before even sitting down and touching the pedals. And there are actually several fan-made versions of this vehicle, one-to-one -one scale that are actually roadworthy, which is definitely a goal of mine. And a lot of this information comes from the Halo Encyclopedia. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel for free, or check out our Patreon and PayPal, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, especially our $25 tier, Andrew Ban, Black Phoenix, Feed Me Kittens, and Seraph Diaz. But most important of all, remember, all you need to end a game right is two words, ten letters, and the right music. And the Warthog Fuel will be with you, always.